Hi everybody and welcome to this dose of Dr. E and Dr. P. So today this is a dose on kidney disease in people with type 1 diabetes. So a fairly specific topic and why are we talking about this? Well, um, you know, we all fear type 1 or type 2 going on dialysis or transplantation and Diabetic kidney disease has no symptoms in the early stages, but we know we can do things early on that can prevent you from progressing to what we call end-stage diabetic kidney disease. Super important topic. Mm -hmm. So starting with this, you know, how common is it? So this is uh, data from every type one, essentially, in the United States, adults. Um, and we see that about 20% have some degree of kidney failure. And you might be thinking that's low or high, I'm not quite sure. But even if you're in that category, 20%, like you said, there's things you can do to make sure that your kidney function is stable. Um, so it really isn't the death sentence that it used to be. Yeah, and many of the things we do to, to protect our kidneys also help our hearts as well. Absolutely. So you're saying, how do I know if I have kidney disease? How do I monitor this? I'm on top of my blood sugars every minute of every day. Well, how do I know what's going on with my kidneys? Well, this slide basically shows that there's two tests that you should have done at least every year, potentially every six months, but at least every year. The one on the left is a blood test, and the one on the right is a urine test. So every year when you're going to the lab to get these things done, but prior to your endocrinologist visit, you should have a blood test, a urine test. The blood test basically measures how well your kidneys are filtering, how well they're functioning. It's called the EGFR, or their estimated glomerular filtration rate. Say that even, even I can't even say it, you know, that, that well. And that's estimated from the creatinine value. So if one of those is flagged as abnormal, it's certainly something that you need to talk to your doctor about. You know, why is my kidney function as EGFR? What's going on with that? The second is when you pee in the cup, there's an assessment of how much protein is in your urine. And normally, in, in the conditions of when people are healthy, um, there's no protein in our urine. We kind of hold on to all that protein. So if there is protein showing up, it's a sign that there's damage to the kidney, and it's absolutely something that you need to talk to your provider about. Yeah, and this is not protein like the kind you eat, so it has nothing to do with that. Right. And we call it microalbumin or macroalbumin. And remember that um, these tests go down over time or go up over time, depending what you're looking at, you should follow your values over time. Mm -hmm. And then the minute you see a trend in the wrong direction, that's when you should call your caregiver because the earlier you intervene, the better. That's the key message for today. Yeah. And to that point, if you're told that your kidney function is declining or, hey, all of a sudden this protein showed up in your urine, asking to see a kidney doctor, a nephrologist, when we talk to our partners in, in nephrology in the, the kidney field, they always say, we see people too late. You know, we need to be seeing them earlier because we can be more aggressive with some of these pillars of treatment that we're going to talk about next. Go for it. All right. So this slide shows a pyramid. And basically at the bottom of the pyramid is that all patients should be doing these things. First to avoid kidney disease, but then if you do have it, these become even potentially more important to be extra aggressive about them. So we say the ABCs. So starting with A is um, your A1C, or it says your glycemic control here, keeping your A1C less than seven, if you can, we understand it's, it's hard work. Um, B for blood pressure, um, your goal should be less than 130 over 80. And if you're consistently above that range, you need to start on medication. We'll talk about specific medications that you should be on. Yeah, and all of you should have a blood pressure cuff at home. Mm -hmm. It bounces around like crazy. You want to get multiple values, but that's also an invisible risk factor. You don't feel that bad unless your blood pressure is 300 over 200 and you get a nosebleed or you get cheap seats at the baseball game, one of those two. Yeah. But you got to know your blood pressure at home, not just when you go to the doctor's yeah. office. A, B, C is for cholesterol. Um, keeping your lousy, your LDL cholesterol less than 70 usually means that everybody with diabetes needs to be on some kind of cholesterol lowering medication, um, something like a statin, Lipitor, et cetera. These are fantastic medications. So at every visit, you really should kind of have this A, B, C in your mind. Yes, let's talk about our blood sugars, but don't forget about the B and C, the blood pressure cholesterol. And then we talk about the D. Yeah which is drugs. <laughs> yeah, before we get to drugs, I wanna say one quick thing about things to avoid. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like Motrin, you don't have to panic if your kidney function is normal, but you should be careful on how much you use. And also, be careful about radiographic dye. If you need an MRI or CT, there are certain things they can do to make uh, you safer from the damaging effects of the dye. All right, 
So now as we move up this pyramid, this is as you know, more if you have kidney disease. So this thing says RAS blockade, that's a, a kind of doctor term for a specific type of blood pressure lowering medications called ACE inhibitors or ARBs like lisinopril or captopril, enalapril, they have these prills after them. And this is a specific kind of medication that lowers your blood pressure, but has been shown to delay the progression of kidney disease. So absolutely that should be part of your armamentarium if you have yeah, kidney that, problems. That's like the first one, yeah. for sure. Now next to it, it says SGLT2 inhibitors, or really just SGLT inhibitors. These are medicines like Farziga, Jardians that have been approved for a while. that have been shown to delay the progression of people with type 2 diabetes, but they haven't been approved for people with type 1 yet. And to be honest, we're really missing out on these medications because they increase the risk of DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, in patients like us with type 1, so they're not approved yet. Yeah, but... There, a company called Lexicon, who is the sponsor of this yes, thank you, podcast, uh, they <laughs> have a, a drug called Sodagaflosin. It's approved for type 2s for congestive heart failure, but they are going for the indication for type 1. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be one of the most powerful uh, drug pillars that we have, more than ACE inhibitors. But when you treat diabetic kidney disease, you do multiple medications and non-pharmacologic approaches to delay the progression of needing dialysis. Mm -hmm. That's the key right there. So in summary, just know the tests you need to get. If you do have you know, some kidney issues, be aggressive, be on top of this, see a specialist, make sure you're kind of hitting all these pillars, even print this out, take this to your doctor. Um, but we hope that you found this educational. It's always good doing this with you. Love it, Steve. Yeah. And we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, listen to the podcast.